TJ Flores. I'm racing with uh, Todd Romano in the Tonka number 33 trophy truck. This week the Silver State 300 is going on here in Las Vegas and normally I'd be racing it. This week we uh, opted to take the time off and go through this trophy truck uh, to get us prepared for the Baja 500 and then the other night Josh Daniels called me and asked me if I'd ride with him in qualifying so to help him out in qualifying and uh, you know, and I said, heck yeah, I'd like to go. You know, I love racing. So uh, that's why tomorrow I'm going to go ride with him in qualifying, hopefully help him get to a number one spot in qualifying. And then uh, race day, I'm going to stay home, save my money, and uh, put in my honeydews list at home and uh, get that done so I can take time off to go to the Baja 500. That's awesome. Uh, this is uh, the number 33 trophy truck. It's a pretty new truck. It only has maybe 500 total miles on it right now. And uh, we've had a few little issues, so we're pretty much stored down to a skeleton to go through it from uh, top to bottom and redo some plumbing and we really want an opportunity to go win uh, the Baja 500 so uh, we're putting the effort at it and it's hard to skip a race especially when I won like the Silver State 300 I've won it overall a couple times and just been you know it's real tough and it's my hometown and it's tough to miss it but the bigger picture is trying to go to the Baja 500 and uh, have the opportunity to go run up front and you know hopefully in the end of the day there we uh, get a number one you know or I, that's what I'm shooting for is number one. I, it's hard to go home with anything less than that. Baja is just a, a lot longer, more uh, grueling race than Silver State. Silver State's a lot more road, so, you know, uh, a truck it can be set up a little bit different, a little stiffer, you know, for Silver State. It's more rally style. Um, I mean, it has its own things. You're really hard on the motor and uh, rear gear because you run so such high speeds. Where Baja, it's just there's an endurance of that. It's such a high speed race too, but it, the endurance of it is you go from the ocean to mountains to the rough desert of San Felipe side. To, you know, Mike's Sky Ranch area and El Coyote, and you know, and then come back at night into Ensenada. So I mean, there's a lot of different uh, aspects of the vehicle you got to address between electrical, plumbing. You know, to, to handle the night load of for the electrical, you got to make sure you got everything on par. There ain't nothing dirty. You know, losing an alternator loses the race. So uh, we just want to make sure we have everything uh, in par for that race. I'll race Baja probably uh, 10 times. And 2006, I was riding with BJ Richardson. I used to prep all the LVDC cars and. Uh, we won it uh, class one and like third overall you had like 52 class one cars that year and uh, you know, so I know how to get up front and uh, know what it takes to be there preparation wise and uh, driver wise so it, it's just a matter of putting it all together and you know putting my years of homework together and, and go down and do a week of pre-running and put that homework together and just put a whole good effort at it. And the amount of years I've been racing in the development of uh, the racing aspect, the vehicle aspect. Uh, you know, when I started racing, there was no GPS in the vehicles. So I was fortunate enough to be one of those to learn how to drive in the dust and learn to drive what you see. Compared to now, uh, a lot of people use the GPS as 100% notes and drive blind. And uh, it's good until something happens. You know, there's a lot of been a lot of big crashes, and I think it pertains to the GPS aspect of it. Is people aren't driving off their gut instinct anymore. They're trusting what they what a co-rider is calling out, and you know, mistakes happen yeah, really easily. So that's the biggest change I've seen in the off-road part is just the the effort put at pre-running and GPS marking and no, course notes. So um, and you see, most of the guys are still up front, or all the guys that have, have come from when they had no GPS and they're the ones that are consistently up front because I think they still drive off that gut instinct of driving what they can see and not driving off a of GPS. I think that's the biggest aspect. Uh, that and brakes, you know, the development of brakes. Like uh, we use JMR brakes, and you know they stop the truck really, really good. They're, the the brake control you got with them, with the technology they're putting in behind the brakes and the uh, brake pads. And we use Hawk brake pads, and the the technology just behind that is uh, you know huge. I'd be able to if. You, you, everyone can go fast, but can you get it stopped under control and not burn them up doing it is a, another aspect. And then shocks, the development of how large the shocks have gotten and uh, shock fluid to keep the temperature down. We used to go to San Felipe, we'd melt the shock, you know, burn the seals out of the shocks when we're getting so hot and melt the labels. And this year at San Felipe, shocks, you know, hit 300 degrees, not 600 degrees. So there, the development over the years have been, you know, big strides in off road uh, without any factory backing. You know, it's a huge, uh, 
pretty impressive what ha what can be done with just guys fabricating and you know without a factory back uh, programs. Uh, the, what, what's in store after Baja would be uh, Vegas Torino is the next race and uh, you know that's why we're going to Baja we want to put the effort at going there and you know putting a good effort in that's just going to transition over to Vegas Torino because they're both long endurance races that require about the same amount of vehicle to go they go from rough to high speed to technical you know and an all around truck that's what it needs so that's the goal of getting this truck to be an all around truck right now it's not there yet but it, it's it's got some cool attributes it's really good on the roads right now and just got to do some tuning on the in the rough aspect of it some spring rate work and uh but and then after that i think is uh i don't know if we're going to do blue water or not but it, definitely the baja 1000 and then henderson 250 so i mean we're going to shoot for the Baja 500 you know, Vegas Torino, the the long endurance races, and uh, you know put a good effort at that, and I mean those are the ones you get noticed at. Uh, my commitment to racing, uh, you know, an off road is a full time gig. I mean from the day from me waking up at four in the morning, I breathe, sleep, and eat off road. You know that's what my, what my shop does. We maintain cars, and uh, been fortunate over the years to you know have good people behind me and put me in race cars and uh, allow me to do my job and you know be up front and be a contender all the time. What advice I'd have for uh, young kids, you know, I've helped out a few that struggle with grades, right, you know, freshmen, the hard time of being a young adolescent, you know, of changing and getting the influence is just, you know, figure out how to focus on school. I mean, race cars aren't cheap, and I would say it's a half a percent that gets the opportunity to go racing like I did, you know, I, uh, I think nowadays you got to have school behind you, and Go in a field like medical or attorney, something that's never going to end. And it's only going to get better, uh, more expensive. So, uh, I mean, most people race in their 40s. You know, they don't get to race in their, you know, when they're young if they don't got money. So, I mean, they got to realize that uh, off-road, I mean, if you're even a talented welder fabricator, you might make $20 an hour, and that doesn't cut it when you're wanting to go racing. I mean, when it costs 100 bucks a mile to go race a trophy truck minimum, you know, it just doesn't happen. So... You know, my my thing is, you need something that makes more than that. You know, attorneys two hundred fifty bucks an hour. You know, that that starts getting you in the ballpark. <laughs> but it takes sacrifice. You know, I, I mean, I work hundred hour weeks to get where I'm at, and you know, in the same aspect, go to school, work with. You know, it took me fifteen years to get here. So if you become a doctor, you do it done ten. You know, that's why I try to you know reiterate them. You can work on cars afterwards. You know, and play. I mean, but make a career of something else, and uh, you know, bring the racing into it when you can afford it. One of the biggest things, or the people I want to thank, you know, are like Rugged Radio, like you guys, you know, that's such a huge aspect of our communication is be able to be up front is have communication. So having a company like you guys supporting us and, uh, you know, supplying us with the, and tuning, it, I mean, just, it all matters, you know, in the years past, we never had that much, you know, radio communication and, you know, it's still hard with a, uh, most radio communication be a line of sight. You know, we still got mountains. We still have a lot of other things that come into play. But when you know your all your radios are in par, and uh, it's easier to plan logistically a, a race out, or if you're having issues, you can relay and logistically make it happen without losing position on the course. So, you know, rugged radio probably is a huge aspect of our race race program. You know, uh, BF Goodrich tires, King shocks, Champion Raceworks. Uh, Hawk brake pads, Vision X lights, Air Raid air cleaners, you know, I mean, just the companies that have been behind us uh, over the years and allow me to go race and do what I do and be competitive. And, you know, you need those people behind you.